on air. Okay, so discoidal core this time, discoidal reduction. Just a nice fat, sort of slightly flat, slightly roundish Texan flint nodule. And I'm just going to be doing a thick biface on this basically. Bifacial removal. I doubt there'll be too many problems arising. It's a very straightforward reduction sequence. So I just take a flake off, it becomes the platform for the next flake. The edge of that flake now becomes the platform for the next one. I'm not really attempting to thin it as such, just to make nice big usable flakes. Some of which will shatter, some of which will come off. There's really no platform preparation involved at all. A lot of the early stage flakes are pretty heavily cortical because each time I use a flake platform I'm striking into a cortical area so a lot of those primary flakes coming off. That's our discoidal core. Cool. Quite a fat one, but uh, we can just continue to reduce this until there's nothing left. Yep, oh, shall I weigh it just, yep. just in case? We didn't weigh those earlier ones, but we yeah. should weigh them at the preform stage, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can figure we can just. Uh, I don't the flake mass, but yeah, it'll be close, I suppose. Yep. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything fancy, I'm just going to work my way around, alternating around the core. Any kind of opportunistic area of removal, I'll take a flake plan. Sometimes they'll be big, like that one. Sometimes they'll be small. Often get a lot of dihedral platforms as a result of the frequency of these ridges all the way around the outside, you can't help but strike them from time to time, like so. You can also get little sort of pseudo Lavalois points coming off as a result of striking on those ridges. The flake scars converge in the middle. Quite a large flake will come off that will flatten the core a bit. But the secret to this technology is actually to keep this convexity quite large. If you start to flatten it, that's when the problems will arise. It will start to get step terminations. So if you can keep flaking towards this central peak and maintain that peak, then the discoidal core will continue to function as it should. pointed one that came off. Try to a platform, converging to a point. He's just come off. Fortuitously, I didn't, I didn't know that was there. I had no intention of striking that in particular. Nice. 
another one. Take your plate, take your platform. Lots of usable edge on these flakes, they've always got sharp edges on both sides. They tend to be quite squat on the whole way. Short and stout. Another classic, uh, classic discoid edge flake. Massive dihedral platform. And tapering pretty steeply. Like this, so there's nothing left. Um, you've got only one left. Yeah. I mean, I can get tiny thumbnail sized. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to brush that away or? Central piece, a little bit more diffuse here. I think one of the reasons why you get these are. Uh, Dihedral platforms so often on the discoidal cores when they get to this stage is because that's where the, the ridge causes the platform to stick out a bit. It becomes a bit of a prominence that's quite easy to strike. And off comes the little classic tie flake. And by creating those sorts of flakes that taper to a point, you, you keep that central convexity, that little apex. So that allows you to take it to pretty much nothing? Yep. Because you'll, you'll keep the convexities on both sides pretty yeah. uh, stable, well, they won't change very much. These ones are coming nicely to a point now, like an orange squeezer. Concentrating on those little ridges, mm. and you get those flakes that come up to the point every time. And it gets to the point where you sort of have to turn it over because you've got more ridges on this side than on the other side. And away you go on back on the other side. But the, the problem of striking in those dark little ridges again and again is that the flakes tend to always be pretty short and stubby. Potentially becomes more of a problem when you get into this small sized core because there's really the flakes get very small then. If you want a longer one, you'll have to flatten one surface and try and do a basically laval wire and make a flake that comes off most of that surface. maintained exactly the same core form as before. Mm -hmm. Really no alteration there whatsoever. And I'm not doing any maintenance of any kind, just choosing where to flake it, that's all. Choosing where to hit it. So to start. keep the complexities going.
the flakes are getting pretty small now. Mm. Have to be uh, in a fair amount undergoing a fair bit of <laughs> raw material constriction to probably bother too much more with the core at this point. And this is about the size that they often end up getting discarded. Okay. It's not going to yield very much anymore. I mean, in fact, that's, I don't mean that's the size they're normally discarded, that's the size at which they're finally discarded and they're thrown away. I think we'll stop there. Yeah. But we've got very much the discarded core form, mm. as we would expect. We'll get that in that shot. That's it. Let's get the apex on both sides. And that sinuous edge. And each of those flakes cast converges towards the centre.